Hello everyone, this is Michelangelo Badio and this is another installment of my free guitar lessons, uh, the No Boundaries. Uh, hello Cynthia, you're the first one that I've seen here. Hey Jenny, how are you? We always do the shout outs at the beginning. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Nacho, cool, all right. Hi Cynthia, how are you? I see hello MAB. And uh, let's see who else. Brandon, hello, how are you? Whole bunch of people. Uh, I can't pronounce your name, but I love you too. Uh, Alexis, how are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, hello from Nor uh, Eastern. Okay, Juan is watching. So we have a lot of people. Um, let's just get started here. Now, what I'm playing is my uh, sawtooth signature guitar. This is the STM24. It's in satin black. I've been playing this. Uh, hey, Denny, how are you? Uh, there's a whole bunch of people online. Uh, let's see, Jose, Nicole, uh, Maria, uh, JD. Hey, man, how are you? Okay, hey, Joe, how are you? I, I know a lot of uh, people. I, I'm trying to keep up with everybody, but there's too many people now. So um, anyway, we're gonna start. I wanted to talk about something that's very close to me. Uh, this is a topic that you wouldn't think about with guitar, but I called it fear of change. And, and uh, you know, there's something, there, you know, there's a thing called the seven deadly fears. And one of the things that I found as I've gotten older, one of the reasons why, you know, that, you know, even that I don't look uh, my age, it's, it's a mindset, it's an attitude. Now, uh, like I said earlier, then I'm going to start talking about this. I am playing the STM24 in satin black. These are in stock now. This is, I have a whole big new signature line from Sawtooth Guitars coming out. The first series of guitars is already in. This is the least expensive of my signatures. It is in the $250 price range. Now, I'm using... A sawtooth 25 watt solid state amp with the coolest reverb. I'm actually gonna, uh, now I always tell the guys at Sawtooth in advance when I'm gonna play what gear. Well, I've added something. I'm also gonna be using the sawtooth 20 watt tube amp, and I wanna use uh, one of their, uh, you'll see it, it's called uh, the ET model. But anyway, the thing about fear of change. Now, the seven deadly fears, I, I'll just say a couple of them, and I think you guys can understand. The fear of growing old, the fear of being poor, the fear of never being loved, the fear of, of being a, dying alone, uh, you know, and, and so, but, and the fear of criticism, that's one of the seven deadly fears. I mean, how many times can you see, you know, if you have a hundred comments and 99 of them says, you're awesome, dude, like you rule, bro. And one of them says, you suck. What? Even Joey goes, what? And so you focus on the one, how can I suck? I don't suck. And so, uh, you know, and I used to say, and this is not a, a religious thing, but if you believe in God or not, but let's just say, you do, and God puts out a YouTube video. You're going to get somebody that goes, I don't like the voice. Oh, I think, like, the message sucks, bro. You know, somebody that's, you know, had a little bit too much to drink on a Friday night, you are got to say something. And so there is a fear of that. It's a true and it's a real fear. But there's also something, too, the fear of change. Now, uh, why do I say that? I am playing... Uh, I have not been a company hopper my entire career. I don't bounce from company to company. Um, I had no choice that, that the former owner of the company I was with passed away. He was one of the healthiest people I knew. He was one of my all-time best friends. But it was time for a change. Now, I'm not young like I was. I might look good for my age, but I'm still my age. And, and I never, you know, what Nikki Six said it best. You have two choices. You get old or you die. I'd rather just get old. And so, what do you think, Joy? I appreciate that, because I want to get old, too. My, my fingers are still feeling really good. See? And so, but... But what I do as far as change is this. If you saw pictures of me when I was a kid, I've always been into hair. I had the pompadour 
I had Elvis meets the Stray Cats. I mean, I look like a rockabilly guy. I worked for hours. I, I talked about this in the last lesson. Just to get that little S Superman thing. That was not easy. That's like, but I had a perfect. It was like perfectly coiffed, feathered back with this big mountain of hair with this S right in the middle. I was like, I'm bad. But what was I playing back then? So my double guitar, I modulated that to C sharp minor. Went... So I did that on my double where I played the like. I love that song. It's called Pipeline. It's the inside of a wave. It's surf music. Now, I used to call it the Shanties, but I think it's the Shanties. Uh, but they were the original ones that did it, then the Ventures. But I love that. And the thing about change is this. There's a philosophical concept. Very simple. The only constant is change. Uh, if you've lived around a neighborhood for a long time, uh, 20, 30 years, 10 years, and you see a change... We see change every day. If you go online and see like Paris in the year 1880, then Paris in the year 2020, and they show the same basic scene. Uh, I mean, they have photos from the 1840s now. I watch all these things online because I love history. But the point is the only constant is change. But change is hard sometimes. And see, change, whether it's guitar playing or whether it's life in general, it's difficult. Now let me tell you the first time I experienced change in a profound way. My dad was a builder. He was a very innovative builder. Like in the old days they used to have like like cold faucets and hot faucets and you had to turn both of them on and like they were completely separate. Well my dad found this company that actually you pulled it up and you moved one way it was a dial. One way was hot, one way was cold. And he was one of the first builders to ever use these kinds of innovations. He was actually on television for it in, in the Chicago area. Uh, but also, I saw something happen to my dad. He got screwed over by his own family on his side of the family. Not my mom's side. I'm super close to my mom's side of the family. But my father's side, the Badio side, screwed him over. Uh, he employed his brothers, and, and they messed him up in business. He was forced to sell his company, seriously. And, and I have first cousins on that side, and they don't know the whole story. I don't even know the entire story, but I saw what it put my dad through. And we went from this really beautiful uh, building that he had built for us to a much smaller house. Uh, it, and, and mentally, it just got him to the point where uh, he couldn't believe his own family could do that to him. But as many of you know, and historically, uh, families are some of the worst people you can possibly deal with, especially when it comes to money. And so, and I remembered that, and I had started playing guitar. I'd already been playing guitar for a couple of years. And we moved from this really beautiful three-flat building that my dad had built to a much smaller house. And, and uh, he was never the same after that. And I told myself, you know, um, I'm not that close to that side of my family, but that's not what it has what, what this is about. It's about change, abrupt change. But here's what happened to me. I was going to middle school. I was in seventh grade, really popular. You know, I, I was with a nice house and everything. I had a lot of friends. I was super popular. We moved to this smaller house. We go to, I go to an eighth grade middle school. Seventh grade was in the nice school. Eighth grade, I went to a school that was just not, nearly as cool and as nice and as nice of a neighborhood and I was really little. Um, you know, I talked about this in clinics where my sister used to torment me, Marcia. She's not even here anymore, my younger sister. She'd just go, Michael, you're never gonna grow! And I'd be like, Marcia, shut up! I'm your older brother! That's right! I'm part of this guy! I'm your older head! And so, I'll, I'll, here's my sister 
And here's me. And she's my younger sister. She's that much taller than me. And I have pictures to prove it. So now I'm in eighth grade. I'm super short. Okay, I was the second shortest kid in my graduating class. You should see, and we're talking 12 years old. I'm here. Everybody's here. Thank God I'm over six feet. I'm 185 centimeters, so I'm nice and tall now. And, uh, but what happened was this. I go to a new school. I'm not popular. I'm not known at all. And, and I'm not in a school that now I'm really little. Okay, so, so physically, I'm much shorter than everybody. Nobody knows me. And then we had to take shop. Now, if anybody knows what shop is, we use power tools. And, and so we're using electric drills, electric saws. I was already playing guitar. I already knew from the time I was 10 years old, and especially at 12, that I was going to be a professional guitarist, and nothing was going to stop me. And I told uh, my parents, I said, my Dad, I don't want to use these things. I said, I'm not going to be a carpenter. I said, I, you know, nothing against carpenters. It's a noble profession. I said, I'm not going to work with these power tools. And, and so my dad goes, okay. So he signed a note saying, I, I don't, I, he's not allowing me to use power tools because, and then, you know, the crazy thing was, I started getting made fun of. Uh, when I was a kid. Now, I had taken judo. I had taken boxing. My dad was really tough. I kind of liked to fight. Uh, you know, it's, I had this competitive thing in me. But what happened was I was so little. It was all new to me. I had no friends. I was in a new house. It wasn't nearly as nice as the house that I, that I lived in. And, and my dad, I could see, he was just so hurt from his family. And, and so, and, and then I'm not using power tools. Even the teacher started making fun of me. And, and so, like, the oh, baby, oh, <laughs> what, are you, what are you free, dude? And I was like, hey, man, whatever. And, and, and I, was, I was to the point where, like, I was losing it inside. I was kind of by myself. I couldn't, I couldn't talk to anybody, but I had my guitar. And here's the, here's, and what happened in high school, one of my friends took shop, and he actually sawed off part of his hand. He had, a, he had an accident. So I, I in my mind, but, but I, was, I was in this situation where I needed a change. And I spent a year of, of, of just kind of being tormented, but I had my guitar and I was in a band. I had another life outside of school. And so, and I made a few friends, but not many. I didn't relate to this school, but there were two great things about it. One, I learned the metric system because at that time, the United States was thinking about going metric. So I learned the metric system. And I'm not a drug dealer, but the only ones that's eating out of the metric system in the United States are drug dealers. Yeah, hey, bro, you want like a gram, dude? Okay. You know, I know 28 grams makes an ounce, bro, like an ounce of weed, bro. And so, you know, I know this stuff, but that was one, but two. There was this teacher. Now, I was Mr. Unknown. Nobody knew I could play guitar as good as I could play. See, in my other school, I used to play guitar in the school. I played in front of my class. I was popular. I could draw really good. I had a lot of friends because I had gone to grade school. I grew up with these people. Now I'm in this new school. I knew nobody. I'm little. I, I can't use power tools. I didn't want to use them. It was my choice. And I don't regret that decision ever. Because one of my good friends, well, not a super good friend, but one of my friends in high school had an accident and actually chopped off part of his hand in a power tool accident at school. So I do not regret this. And so, and I'm still here and I got all my digits. And so, and here's what happened. When I got out of eighth grade and I went to high school, I said to myself, in, in, and also, too, being alone and having, I couldn't talk to my parents. I had nobody really to talk to. I was losing it inside. I mean, I'd go to school sometimes. I'd have tears in my eyes. I'd be like, this sucks, man. I hate this school. I hate this school. I hate the people in this school. I can't stand the teachers, and I'm this big. And, and I, I was so little. I was so short. I had, like, I felt, I, and so, but what happened was, there was a teacher, and she didn't know me from anybody. I was not popular. I was just this kid with super short hair and ears. She said something. Her name was Mrs. Ickes. And I looked her up uh, because her, her picture in our, our eighth grade middle school yearbook was like, I don't like any of you. She looked like a mean lady, and I don't remember if she was nice or mean because I was nothing. I was a nothing. 
I was a person that was just there and, and in this class. But she said something that this is where the mole of my story. She said, people, as they get older, and I was in eighth grade, middle school, one year before high school. She said, as people get older, they get in routines. And I remember this almost every day of my life. I looked her up. She passed away in the 1990s. Uh, I didn't know her. I never talked to her really one-on-one. -on -one. I never answered questions. I was like this kid in the back, like, don't even call on me. I was really, I had changed. My personality for one year of my life was completely different than in every other year. I was really a nobody, a nothing and I wanted to be as invisible as I could be in the school. And so what happened was she said something that was so profound that it, it impacted my life up until today, my entire life. She said her name was Mrs. Ickes. And, and uh, I, I think her first name is Maxine. But I actually looked her up online and I found her and she died many years ago. She was elderly when I was, when I was 12 years old. She had to be in her late 50s or early 60s, you know, right before retirement age, uh, even back in the day. So I knew she'd probably be, go you know, she was gone now. But she said this, she said that when people get older, they get in routines. And she said, when you're putting on your socks, she said, put your socks on a different way. She said that if you get used to, to like putting your shirt on first, don't put it on first. She said, change the little things in your life, and all of a sudden, it starts affecting the big things. Now, when I heard that as a kid, see, I'm a weird guy when it comes to things. Like, I'll listen or I'll read comments and I'll go like that, 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 nothing, nothing, like, boom, and something will hit me. That hit me because I realized one of the reasons why I'm so open to new things is because I constantly do things a different way. Um, I'm not kidding. The next time you find yourself in a routine, change that routine. Mix it up a little bit. That comes from working out, but it also goes for playing guitar. See, because not only she said, put your socks on a different way. Do you know I still do that to this day? I find if I put my left sock on first, the next day I'll change it to the right sock. Because I always think of this Mrs. Ickes thing because this has been something that's molded my career. I mean, I just got voted one of the top 15 uh, best, like, uh, teachers, you know, of all time, basically, uh, you know, that are kind of celebrity teachers. Mel Bay, who's been, whose books have been around for 50 or 60 years, was number one. Joe Satriani was number two. I was number three. I was ahead of Paul Gilbert. I was ahead of Guthrie Govan. I was ahead of Tommy Emanuel. And then there's a lot of uh, new school guitar players that are there that are influencing a lot of people. But see, it's, it's my life uh, philosophy. The only constant is change. I had to change my life for the better. See, I only think positive things. If there's negativity in my life, if people come up to me and say, oh, this sucks, this sucks, I get away from them. I get away from them big time. The people that are in my life are, are people that I really feel good about, whether it's in business or whether it's friendship. Uh, because if I don't, if I sense negativity, I can't handle it. I literally can't. And I know I'm talking a lot more than playing today, but this is important because if you change, think about change and know the only constant is change and you mix up little things in your life. Let's say the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is turn on your phone. Okay, I do it because I turn it off at night. Girls never turn off their phones. And then after a while, their phone is like, ah, ah. It doesn't work. And they're like, my phone doesn't work. I go, did you ever turn it off? No, I haven't done it in eight months. Girls don't like to turn off phones. I don't know why. I turn mine off, mine off almost every day because they're like these little thinking things. The RAM gets confused after a while, especially being bombarded with, with things all the time online. So I think in terms of change. I am not afraid to change. And people said, well, then why don't you change your hairstyle? Well, because I look good. <laughs> and if you look at pictures of me over the last 20 years, I did change a lot, but we didn't have social media like today. So it's hard to tell. I mean, there was a while in the 1990s, I had blonde streaks, a really short hair. 
uh, you know, because I, I had short hair for, I had really short hair uh, in the early 2000s, but you just don't see a lot of pictures. And and sometimes because I'm older, and, and you can take a picture of me five years ago, it looks almost the same as today. That's the good thing about being older, and, and I take care of myself. But I remembered that from Mrs. Ickes. I'm not kidding. Even in routines, when I go to the gym and work out, I vary the routine. I always change it up. When I'm practicing, sometimes I'll just do my stock exercises. Sometimes I'll just... You know, I'll start writing songs right away. Now, speaking of songs, I wrote a song when I was a teenager. I wrote a lot of them. On my new album, More Machine Than Man, I played this. Watch. And then I had the third line. And then I had the melody going. I wrote that when I was a teenager. And I called it, Is It In My Head? And I always loved that riff because when I wrote songs, there's always a lot of things going on. Like I write bass lines, I write counterpoint. And so I redid parts of that song and put it uh, in, in one of my songs called I Pray the Lord. And I got the idea for uh, that title for Steve Vai. Now, one of the things, too, in my music, I'm going to tell you something else. Again, this idea of change. People are afraid of change. I'm not always liking change. But look it. We, I have never in my life said, I know how you feel. How do I know how you feel? Now, I can empathize with you. I can have empathy. Maybe I've gone through some, something similar. But I don't know how you feel. You don't know how I feel. But I can tell you this. I've gone, because especially being older now, uh, Indiana Jones, the, the, the Crystal Skull movie, they said a great line in it. And one of the, the professors said to Indy, he said, we're at an age now where they're taking things away. And I found that to be true. As I'm older, you know, my, I have no parents left. I don't even have my younger sister left. And I'm not trying to elicit any kind of sympathy. But I've had to deal. Christmas is not like it used to be. You know, I, there's a lot of empty chairs, you know, at the table now. And so uh, does it make me sad? Yes. But it doesn't make me quit. And it strengthened my resolve. The only constant is change. I have to deal with it. I have two choices. I deal with it positively or negatively. And I choose positive. And so, and I always think of Mrs. Zikas. I always do. Almost every day of my life, I thought about this eighth grade teacher that didn't know Mike Badio from anybody. I, I was just another kid in the class that was insignificant. This, that year, I was insignificant to everybody around me except for me because I had a big vision in my head. And thank God I grew. And uh, I, had, I was in a band and I'd be playing at teen centers on the weekends, but nobody knew my life for that year. But when I got into high school, I, 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 I immediately went back to some of my friends that I knew from, from uh, the earlier times and I met all these musicians. It was a total, because I said to myself, I'm not gonna be the Mike Badio of, of middle school, eighth grade. I'm gonna be the Mike Badio that I'm normally at. And it worked. And so, but here's what I'm saying with all this, with all these things. I wrote a song called Sail On when I was a kid. And I went. <laughs>
had the chorus, like, I'm always good with choruses. And I didn't know that the Beach Boys later it came out with a song called Sail on Sailor. But I went, Sail on, Sail on. I said, I'm young and foolish in the game of life. It's just a pebble I throw across the lake. And I, I was like, to see how many times it skips and jumps to new and higher waves. And see, I was a young kid. And so I pictured life was all ahead of me. But the last verse says, and this is when I was literally 18 years old. I wrote, I'm now an older man and I've seen a lot. And I wrote, and, the, and I said, I said, the trials and times of worn men, I said, they can't forget. And so, and, and it reminded me of like my great uncle was in World War II and he told me about being captured and, and, and held as a prisoner and having to dig his own grave. And then I was like, wow. And so I wrote this song and it's just called Sail On. And, and I had like, when I went, I had, and then I had the keyboard player go, this counterpoint going it was a really cool song but the point is this that change has enabled me to stay relevant to stay great on guitar because I constantly mix it up see there's profound changes you know when you have a fork in the road where like everything hits the fan I'm telling you three years ago my mom died the owner of Dean died so I lost not only my mom I lost my job because Rockstar is a job, but the new owners, I just cannot even, I, they're so, it's like you can't even relate. That I, It's like, duh. Uh, you know, and, and, but here's the thing. Here's where changes. I met the owners of Sawtooth because they owned GoDPS many years ago, and I was so impressed by them. And, and you know, we had talked, and, and I tried to stick it out, uh, but we had talked, and it was the right time. And it's not easy to change. It's not easy to say, okay, I'm going to completely change my life. I had a huge mail order business. Angela, we used to sell CDs. I was signed to two major labels, Warner Brothers twice. I had my own really successful record company for almost 20 years. You know how many orders I packed in that company? None! You know why? My mom was actually employed by me to take care of my business. And she did it. She was amazing. I mean, you know, she could pack orders. She could, you know, I, and it's like, I mean, and then as she started getting older, uh, I realized she wasn't able to handle. Uh, and also, it all kind of worked out because CDs started to fade out DVDs. So, you know, it was a natural progression. I mean, you know, you, you know, if you're a blacksmith in the era of cars, you, you had a little bit of problems. So, you know, there's always going to be that change. Again, the constant being changed. And so I moved out of that. What I do now is, is completely different than what I did three years ago. I had a, a mail order company. Uh, I, I signed to Rat Pack Records now because I don't have my own label anymore. There's, there's no reason. I, there's, it, it's better to be with a label now or just put something out yourself. It's one song. But, and again, the, I keep going back to this change because I've never had a hand injury. Why? I adjust my game. See, I said, okay, well, if this was working, if that was working five years ago, well, wait a second, this kind of hurts now. Let's move it inward. See, I talked about this last week. See, I keep my arm very close to my body. Now, the reason I do this is because there's no pressure. See, I put the pressure, even when I lift my double guitar, the pressure is not on this rotator cuff. You know how many drummers have had rotator cuff injuries, uh, pitchers in baseball? This shoulder goes out. So see, what I do is I change. I mix it up. I adjust my game to, to make sure that I do the best that I can for me. Now, I want to play you something here. And I'm going to use, I'm going to blow... Uh, the people at Sawtooth Mine today, because I didn't even say I was going to use this guitar. This guitar sounds mean. Okay. I'm 
going to show you a bit of, of Mikey songwriting. Now, here's another thing. Every solo album I do, I try to change from the one before. Now, this is just an amazing guitar. And listen to this anthem. <laughs> Bridge position. Here's a. All right, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I mean. Oh, you get chords. Just beautiful, beautiful sounding guitar. Sawtooth makes incredible guitars. The thing that I love about Sawtooth so much, I, the people are amazing, but. They have a great vision. You know, they're forward-thinking people. And I can eat. I mean, listen to that. They make fantastic guitars, and they're reasonably priced. We want to add people to the guitar community. Now, uh, you know, and I've said this a million times, but if you think of, of, of guitar sales, you know, like as a pie, you know, and, and each company, Fender has this and Gibson has this, most companies just want to steal part of another guitar company slice. My slice of the pie is only this big, but I want to like this big, so I don't want to do nothing more than just steal somebody else's part. And so we don't think like that. We want to make this bigger, much bigger. That's why we're doing this. There's a noble cause behind all this stuff, and I'm not stupid. And so, but I want to play you a song that I, a riff that I wrote. Every album I've done, I try to change it up. If you listen to More Machine Than Man versus No Boundaries, you listen to No Boundaries versus Hands Without Shadows, the playing, the riffs, everything, you, I have the signature MAB sound because that's me, that's my heart, it's my soul. But I mix it up. Here's one of my songs called Pray on Pray. Now here's another thing that I want to impart to you. Even my song titles are not stock. See, that's, an, uh, you know, when you, want, when you see a lot of other artists, they steal song titles from everybody else. Uh, you know, my new song called Burn. Oh, really? Uh, did you, let's see. Uh, you know, and uh, I mean, there, people use a lot of other people's stuff. I do the same thing. But again, change it. Mix it up. Don't do the same thing over and over. I came up with this riff that's unlike, think about Freight Train, Long Way From Home and No Boundaries, and then think of the same guy writing this. Did I write this insanely cool melody? I wrote counterpoint. So I had da 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 da, and then I had do 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 do, and I had everything match perfectly. And I called it "Pray on Pray" because you know what it reminded me of? It's like have you ever seen that meme, "The Last Act of Defiance," where this hawk is like, Wah! and the mouse, he's coming after the mouse. The mouse knows it's going to die. And the mouse went and gave you the flip off. And it was like, and so it's pray on, P-R-A-Y, pray, P-R-E-Y, like your pray, Borrow. That's it. Over and out. Hasta la vista. Now, I want to change guitars and change sounds. I'm going to use now the Sawtooth 20-watt uh, tube amp and get some overdrive happening here. <laughs> 
Okay. Check this bad boy out. Now, I added a few effects. I've got some delay on this guitar. This is my new Sawtooth guitar. The other guitars are in stock. My Sawtooth M24 Satin Black is 250 bucks, and it's in stock now. Uh, the green uh, ES, e, I'm sorry, ET guitar that you saw is in stock. These amps are in stock. This guitar will be in really soon. It is the seven string that you always wanted. If you're afraid or have never used the seven string, this is the one to get. Uh, it's got Fishman Fluence pickups. And then we use a standard uh, slash style string ga uh, gauge. So this is a smaller scale length that's 24 and 3 quarters. See, a lot of purists say, oh no, you must use large scale lengths on 7th string because of string tension. Or they use fan frets. Or there's this thing called true temperament. Steve I uses it where the frets are staggered. It's a little problem with that. There's no such thing as true temperament. <laughs> our, temp our tuning is called well-tempered. It's slightly out of tune, and I talked about this last week. It's a nice name. Oh, yes, we're doing true temperament. Well, true to what? Tempered is out of tune. So you're saying that you're true to being out of tune? And, and so, now, I'm not saying that doesn't sound good, okay? But I'm saying, you know, I'm a theory major. You know, you know you're not going to pull the wool over my eyes when it comes to music. And so here's, I love this because... We were able to keep it in tune and listen to the just nastiness of the seventh string. It's got that 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 neck pickup sound that I love. So with the Fishman Fluence, you can, there's a push-pull right here, passive or active. So you get death times two. Oh, yes. I, I just love this. I know I haven't showed a lot of exercises, but I've said something that's one of the most important things in my entire life. Change. The only constant is change. And you have to ask yourself, can't, you know, it's scary sometimes. Look at, how do you think I felt, you know, with, with, you know, being an, uh, you know, a 12 year old kid being super small, you know, my father had just been his, he had to sell his business from his own family. And we had to move to a much smaller house. I mean, the whole thing was like, I saw my dad and I was so young, I didn't understand it. But I, I understand, stood one thing, that, that I said, it's better to be positive than negative. And, and that, that eighth grade in middle school, it was so horrible for me in my head, except for these two profound things. One, the metric system. Duh, I know the metric system inside and out because that year I was taught it. It's hurt, served me my whole life. After 58 countries, uh, you know, I know the euro. I know, you know, now I have apps. I mean, I, I understand if somebody says 10 meters in my brain, I completely understand it. Or they said, you know, 150 kilometers. I understand it. You know, a, a, a square, square meter, I understand it. So it, it's easy to me. And the other thing was, Change your socks different way. Uh, if you wear a watch and you put it on first before your shirt or you put it on after your shirt, change it. If you're practicing guitar a certain way, change it. See, that's what they used to say in workouts, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger, wait, let's do, yes. It's a huge muscle, we know. It, I don't know, it looks like one of the Alps to me. I'm just kidding. But the idea is this, you vary your workouts 
because it's the it helps your mind, it helps your body, it helps everything. Um, when I switch to seven string guitars, I don't just use six string, I use seven string a lot, kind of like John Petrucci. But the thing that I learned ab about this is that it's not a big leap of faith, but you know how you go in, into things? You know how you, how you uh, start to do change in your life? Do it, start it. There's no, because things will evolve Things will, will enter your life. People will come into your life. You know, there, there's a lot of memes, but one of them was really cool. I mean, I'm in a lot of memes. It's great. Uh, but it said, look at your, the five closest people to you. Do you like those people? Are they good people? Because who you associate with uh, has a lot to do with who you are. I mean, if you, you know, we used to say in Nitro, you can't soar with the eagles if you hang out with turkeys. Turkeys don't fly, and when they try to fly, they don't fly very far. We soared with the eagles. If you want to be an eagle, hang with eagles. If you want to be a turkey, hey, I'm not a judge. I'm not a critic. I don't criticize. I'm just telling you that these are things that have made MAB what I am. The reason why, and like look at Paul McCartney, he's doing a new record. I have an unlimited supply of riffs in my head and I always am cognizant of the fact of what I've done before this. My new album, More Machine Than Man, is different than any album I've ever done and I'm extremely proud of it. And so, and I've already got, I actually wanted to do an acoustic album and that's one of the things I'm gonna do. With Sawtooth Guitars, we have a Sawtooth band we get to do vocal songs. We get to do all these cool arrangements. I'm involved in projects now that I just love to do. I, I don't need to just, you know, shred out. I mean, I love it. Like... <laughs> and listen to this guitar. Sorry, I had to turn that off. It just sounds so good. Now, also, one last thing. Check out my YouTube page. If you want detailed instruction, detailed. Go to mentalmethod.com. I have 13 instructional programs. And so I've got so much, so much teaching material online. But I felt this idea of change is really important because one thing and one thing only is constant in our world, change. If you can't adapt, you're going to be left behind. See, there's no such thing as keeping the status quo. You either are going to change or you are not. See, it. See, I look at life as like a coin. It's PMA on one side, positive mental attitude, NMA on the other, negative mental attitude. There's no gray area in this in my brain. So when, when I think about something, is this a negative experience? Is it a positive experience? And, believe, and if it is negative, how do I make it positive? If it's positive, enjoy it. You know, one of the things that a lot of people in life don't know, they don't take an opportunity when they see it. Uh, because they don't understand that it's an opportunity. And two, they just don't know who their friends and allies are. And, and see, I didn't know this when I was younger. I had a sense of it. But I know this when I'm, now that I'm older. And, and so I know who my friends and my allies are. I also know pretty instinctively there, you know, there's a lot of people that don't think like me. Uh, and I didn't know that when I was younger. I was very naive. Uh, I thought everybody was positive. You know, everybody wanted to think everybody else uh, should be good. And they don't. And they don't. There's people out there that want to win and you lose. And that's something that I had to deal with. That I, I See, I didn't come from that environment. I didn't know that. I was, I was a young guy thinking uh, up until my second... Uh, major label record deal when I was in Nitro and I told Jim Gillette what I experienced in my first record deal with Holland. Holland should have been a big band and there's a lot of reasons why we weren't but the one main thing was we delivered the music and I was an integral part of that uh, but we didn't deliver on a lot of other areas that I don't want to talk about but I learned from that 
and Nitro delivered on the music, the label killed our production and we were still successful because our music was cool. And Jim was a great writer. And I told Jim my experience. I said, dude, let's not do this again. And he listened and we did. But anyway, I'm going to cut this a little shorter today. I just want to say this. Go to metalmethod.com. And, and also, too, next tomorrow morning when you wake up, if you have a routine, think about this. Put your sock on a different way. Do something different for you. Change is the only constant. Uh, if you have never played a seven-string guitar, make a change. Get this one. Uh, get my uh, Sawtooth, uh, the M24 in Satin Black, 250 bucks. It's the best guitar on the market in that price range. We have a whole bunch of new signature guitars. We're even doing a new double guitar, a limited edition uh, double, so you can check out. And it's going to be affordable. We can put the best components in guitars and make it affordable. You know why? The, the guys at Sawtooth just work harder and they're smarter. And they know how to do it better. And that's it. Anyway, I just want to say this. I hope you got something out of this today because I genuinely love to help. And it's a little self-serving too because when I help you, it actually helps me. Because if I'm as truthful as I can be to you and it's right, it reinforces what I know and I follow and I practice what I preach. It's not like, you know, you're seeing these things online. Here's all these pro prognosticators. Wear a mask! You must wear a mask! And then all of a sudden, in private, behind closed doors, master for suckers. You know, I don't live like that. What I do is what I do. What you see is what I do. Thank you very much on behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Sawtooth Amps, Chromacast Music Products, and Go DPS Music. Get the new MAB Signature Series, SawToothWorld.com. And remember, change is good. And it's not always fun. It's not always easy. And I'm always scared but I always do it because if it makes sense and it makes your life better, the only constant is change. Embrace it, whether it's guitar or life. See ya.